In the future, Earth goes through an ecological collapse after humans go too far with their experiments on genetically modified entities. Engineered viruses and organisms escape into the wild and wipe out edible plants, all animals, and a large part of the human population. An oligarchy now thrives in enclosed cities called citadels while everyone else struggles to survive, and in order to acquire food, these people rely on seeds traded by the citadels that are coated to produce only one harvest. Among these survivalists is Vesper, a 13-year-old girl that lives with her paralyzed father Darius. To keep his daughter company and be able to talk to her, his mind has been uploaded into a drone that follows the girl around. Vesper is a very smart kid, not only she goes out to forage every day, she has some biology and biohacking knowledge that allows her to use the plants and bugs she finds in the research she conducts at an abandoned lab in the area. She's also the one keeping her father alive by maintaining the machine he's connected to. Darius is very protective of his daughter and doesn't like it when she speaks about finding a way of getting away or following a pilgrim out of curiosity just to see where they go. One afternoon, Vesper returns home to find they've been robbed and the generator that powers the whole house, including Darius' machine, has been sabotaged. If she wants to keep her father alive, she has no option but to go to a nearby farm and ask for help. When she gets there, she finds out they're having trouble with their jug, a genetically created human being devoid of intelligence used for manual labor. The jug got hurt while working and now is useless, so leader Jonas, who happens to be Darius' brother, orders the boy that was in charge of it to put the creature out of its misery. Jonas swears it can't feel a thing because it was made in a lab, but as the boy kills it, the creature fights back and cries. Once this disturbing show is over, Vesper approaches Jonas to ask for some bacteria to power the generator again, offering a blood donation in exchange. Blood is valuable because Jonas uses it to buy seeds from the citadels, but Vesper only comes to donate when she has an emergency. Once she grows up, her blood won't be useful anymore, which is the reason why Jonas wants her to come to live with them, promising to take care of her dad too. Vesper refuses though because she knows he wants to make her one of his breeders and he's always incredibly creepy in the way he points out how much she looks like her mom, who left them a year ago. When the donation is done, Jonas refuses to pay Vesper with the corresponding bacteria, explaining he first needs to sell the blood and that it will take a couple of days. Darius won't survive that long without the machine and a furious Vesper tries to take her blood back, but Jonas catches her and kicks her out. Not willing to give up, Vesper comes back moments later and sneaks into the farm through a hole on the fence only she knows about. Jonas' assistant sees her but decides not to snitch on her, so Vesper gets to break into Jonas' lab and take the bacteria she's owed. While in there, she also takes the chance to steal some of the seeds Jonas has gotten from the Citadel. Speaking of the Citadel, while Vesper is on her way home, she can't help noticing one of the Citadel's gliders flying lower than usual. At home, Vesper fixes the generator before getting to work on the seeds, hoping she can make them fertile and such knowledge will get her a place in the Citadel. Darius tries to explain they'll never accept her no matter how smart she is, hurting Vesper and making her leave the house in tears. While running through the forest, she's shocked to find the body of Camellia, a woman whose clothes indicate she comes from the Citadel. She may be unconscious but she's still alive regardless of all the plants currently feeding on her, so Vesper pushes all the organisms away and drags Camellia home, where she takes care of the wounds by using a synthetic patch she's made herself. Later in the evening, Camellia wakes up and overhears Vesper and Darius arguing over what to do with her. Vesper thinks she could take them to the Citadel but Darius doesn't trust her and thinks they should leave her to die in the forest. Worried and scared, Camellia steals a knife from the kitchen and hides it under her pillow before Vesper comes to check on her. When asked, Camellia confirms that the glider Vesper saw yesterday crashed and she was in it, her father was in there too but they got separated and now she needs to find him. Camellia isn't healthy enough yet to walk but promises a reward for their help, thus Vesper accepts to search for her father in the forest even if Darius doesn't approve. Over dinner, Camellia learns that Darius got hurt while serving the Citadel army and all they gave him was the drone, which is why he doesn't trust them. When suddenly Darius begins to have a seizure, Camellia helps by giving him a kiss, which immediately puts him to sleep. The next morning, Vesper begins her search and quickly finds the glider with Camellia's father Elias in it. Unfortunately, she isn't the only one there, Jonas and a group of survivalists arrive to check the crash too. Jonas approaches Elias and ignores his cries for help, opting instead to kill him for being from the Citadel. When Vesper tries to stop him, Jonas just pushes her away, although he gets suspicious over her reasons to care so much about a stranger. He also finds a woman's scarf inside the glider, indicating there's another passenger they need to find. Afterward, Darius suggests Vesper tell Camellia they found nothing and to inform the Citadel before Camellia does anything rash or Jonas finds her, but the only transceiver is at Jonas' house. When they return home, Vesper lies to Camellia and promises to keep looking for her father the next day. Her wounds are doing better thanks to Vesper's synthetic patches, and since Camellia is so impressed by it, Vesper decides to trust her and show her her secret greenhouse where she keeps all the plants she's bioengineered herself. They all have different abilities and personalities, and Vesper is proud of them all, but she still wishes to find the right configuration to produce edible seeds. 
While Vesper is distracted by one of the plants, Darius approaches Camellia and says he knows there's no way she can take them to a citadel, but she should be kind because Vesper trusts her and the stream is everything to her. When they return home, Camellia asks Vesper about her mom, who left a year ago to join the pilgrims after she lost her voice. Pilgrims are people that travel in groups with veils over their faces scavenging old junk, but nobody knows why because they don't talk. Some rumors say that it's a virus that makes them pilgrims which would mean Vesper's mom didn't have a choice. After Camellia confesses she never met her own mother, Vesper brings out a book with illustrations of animals she never got to see but Camellia did, so she shares her experience and teaches Vesper the noises they make. Knowing that the citadel can keep real animals, Vesper wonders why the survivalists aren't allowed to live there too, and Camellia explains the higher-ups worry that opening their doors would equal not having enough resources. Vesper thinks they could do the worst jobs instead of having to create jugs for it, but Camellia points out the citadel likes control and jugs don't fight back unlike people. Afterward, Vesper brings her mother's old instrument and gets to sing while Camellia plays it. The next day, Vesper sneaks into Jonah's house again to try to use the transceiver, but this time Jonah sees Darius' drone and captures it. While pretending to fix it, Jonas tells Vesper about his missing seeds and the mystery of the missing passenger before pointing out he doesn't like liars, especially when they're his own family. Refusing to confess, Vesper grabs the drone and runs away, only to discover the drone can't fly and it falls as soon as it tries to take off. While trying to retrieve the drone, Vesper finds a body under a tree, it's Jonas' assistant, who was left there to die. Before she can wonder if he was killed for helping her, a bunch of Jonas' followers arrive and push Vesper to the ground where they hold her down to put a seal on her hand, marking her as Jonas' property. When she returns home, Vesper has a breakdown and Camellia doesn't hesitate to comfort her, making her feel bad for her lies and causing her to confess Elias is dead. To prove it, Vesper takes Camellia to see the body, which is floating in the river. Now it's Camellia's turn to have a breakdown as she cries and clings to her father, so Vesper has to drag her out of the river before she drowns. While holding her, Vesper notices a weird scar on Camellia's back that reacts when she touches it. It turns out Camellia is an extremely advanced jug created by Elias, who had been kicked out of the citadel for making a smart slave. Camellia lied too, she would have never been able to get Vesper and her dad into the citadel because she had been on the run. Furious, Vesper hits her before they return home, where she tells Camellia to leave after she gets cleaned up. Then, Vesper finally fixes the drone, and after she tells her dad what happened, Darius asks her not to be hard on Camellia because Jugs can only follow orders and she had no choice. Meanwhile, Camellia grabs a tool in order to end things before the citadel can find her, but Darius' words have changed Vesper's mind and she arrives just in time to stop her. Since Camellia feels like she doesn't have a purpose anymore, Vesper offers to take a sample from her, that way Camellia's cells can be useful for her research. Of course this is easier said than done because just like with the seeds, Camellia's cells are locked as well. Noticing how frustrated Vesper is, Camellia decides to play for her since Elias used to say music helped him concentrate. This turns out to be an excellent idea because the sound of Camellia's music unlocks her cells and Vesper can finally modify the citadel's seeds and make them fertile, so they won't go hungry ever again. To make more progress, Vesper is going to need more filters, for which she makes a quick trip to the old lab with the drone to gather more tools. Meanwhile, Camellia stays home watching over Darius' body, which means Jonas finds her when he comes over to check on his niece. At first Camellia plays the innocent card, but Jonas is onto her and threatens to kill Darius, making Camellia accept to go with him without a fight. However as soon as she turns around, Jonas sees the mark on her back and guesses she's a jug, so he pushes her against the table to try to reprogram her cells and make her accept him as her new master. At that moment, Vesper comes back and pushes him away, triggering a fight that the drone and Camellia also join. With their combined efforts, they overpower Jonas, yet Vesper refuses to kill him. Instead she offers a deal, if Jonas doesn't call the citadel on them, Vesper will share the key to unlocking the seeds so that he can feed his people. Jonas pretends to accept but as soon as he makes it back to the farm, he calls the citadel anyway and tells them where to find the fugitive jug. By the time night falls, Vesper has finished unlocking the first batch of seeds, but sadly there's no time to celebrate, Darius' drone detects a presence outside, which means the citadel has found them. An engineered organism suddenly enters the house through every cranny, but luckily Darius recognizes it from his army days and warns Vesper and Camellia not to breathe until the poison is done exploding. Afterward, Camellia wants to turn herself in to save them, but Darius doesn't let her because they will still come after Vesper just for helping her, instead he offers to distract the soldiers while they run away. Vesper doesn't want to leave him behind, so Darius convinces her to hide nearby and that she can come back after he tells the soldiers that there's no jug there, since he knows how to talk to fellow army men. When the soldiers finally arrive, first they stop at Jonas' farm to kill him and his group. Then they come to Darius' place, where Vesper has covered everything up to make it look abandoned before taking the seeds with her to hide with Camellia in the forest. Darius has no hope that the soldiers will listen to an old man like him and doesn't even try to talk to them, his real plan all along has been to self-destruct the drone and bring the soldiers down with him. In the forest, Vesper sees the explosion and tries to run back to help her father, 
But Camellia stops her before she goes too far since there's nothing they can do anymore. To make matters worse, there are two soldiers that survived the explosion and are coming after them. So Vesper guides Camellia through the swamp, knowing there are dangerous plants there that can kill their enemies. The first soldier effectively falls into this trap and quickly dies, but the second one sees this and learns to avoid the plant. Vesper and Camellia fall to their knees to sneak around while staying hidden behind the bushes, but unfortunately another plant makes a noise when it sees them and alerts the soldier of their location. As the man comes closer, Vesper and Camellia decide a fence is the best defense and jump on him, quickly taking his weapon and hitting him until he walks into the trapping zone and the plant kills him. A sound in the distance indicates more gliders are coming, and Camellia realizes they'll never stop chasing her, which means Vesper and the seeds will never be safe with her around. Vesper can tell she's planning something and tries to protest, but Camellia puts her to sleep with a kiss and hides her body under fallen leaves before surrendering to the soldiers. The next morning, Vesper wakes up and goes to her house, but it's burned down. After planting some of the unlocked seeds in her old garden, she comes across a group of kids that survived the attack on Jonas' farm, and together they begin traveling by following the pilgrims to discover where they go. The destination turns out to be a huge tower that the pilgrims have been building with the scraps they foraged. Vesper doesn't hesitate to climb the tower and once she makes it to the top, she opens her hand to let the wind take away the seeds to different corners of the land, that way they can grow and multiply for everyone. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.